really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Thanks for being here with me again today. I am titling this episode, Reparenting Ourselves After Childhood Trauma. And if you've been listening for a while, you know that I've done several episodes on childhood trauma and healing childhood trauma. Um, but I keep finding information and new resources that are are helpful to me right now. And so I want to, I'll keep bringing this topic up whenever I find something new that I'm working on. And I came across a website. Um, this woman is a reparenting coach, Shelly Robinson, ShellyRobinson.com. And I find her information very interesting and also very helpful to me. And because when I was a new mom, a young parent trying to raise my own children, it became very clear to me at that time that I was wounded. And I honestly hadn't been able to see my own wounds very clearly. But the moment I tried to be what I thought would be a healthy parent toward my children, I I realized there were all kinds of obstacles and barriers, lots of painful wounds inside of me that made it difficult for me to be the kind of parent I wanted to be. And I uh, it was a little bit in a panic at the time, and I started reading as many books as I could find on self-esteem, for one thing, for children, because I realized that I had very poor self-esteem. I had never really developed or learned self-esteem as a child, and that I knew nothing about regulating my own emotions. I only knew how to repress my emotions. And so I did as much reading as I could at the time on childhood development. And I was aware that I was trying to stay one step ahead of my children, that I was trying to go back in my own childhood to whatever age my children were going to be in the next month and look at myself, figure out how I was wounded, trying to fix myself before my kids got to that point so that I could be of help to them as a parent and do the right things and be the best parent I could. So I was constantly in this mode of trying to heal myself so that I could be a better parent to my kids. And that was an inner drive that I had something within me that told me that's what I needed to do. And that's what my children needed. And um, so I, I, I definitely spent lots of time reading and looking at things back then. However, this was, you know, 30 some years ago, and there wasn't as much information available at that time on this idea of reparenting, which is exactly what I was doing back then. And so as I came across this information and started reading about it, I was really interested in in thinking back through my early years as a parent and the work I did on myself then, But I also came to recognize now that I'm a grandparent, it's another opportunity for me to take to take a look back in a way and to also see are there still threads of some of my childhood wounds that haven't healed yet. And I've been aware as a grandmother that there are times when I go into a little bit of a fight or flight response. Um, particularly when the baby seems very, very upset and screams loudly and cries and that I go into a little bit of a panic state, though I'm able to stay calm in my behavior, but internally I feel a panic about it. And so I realize that's something really good for me to look at and maybe an area where I could use some reparenting. So I want to go through a few things that I read on Shelley Robinson's website about the steps she recommends for reparenting. And the first thing she mentions is to pay attention to patterns. And I really like this idea 
because we're trying to figure out when do we get triggered and what is it that triggers emotion within us or triggers panic like I feel at times. And this is just developing an awareness of the fact that there is an issue going on, that there's something there that we're not sure about, some part of ourselves that we haven't fully looked at or examined in the past. And this idea of watching for the patterns, that for me is what made me realize when the baby seems to be screaming out of control in a way uh, for whatever reason, and it's and it's almost always we don't know the reason why the baby's screaming at that at in that moment. That is what elicits this feeling of panic a fear that I'm doing something wrong or that I'm not good enough or I don't know enough to help the baby. And that's a really powerful trigger as I think about it and clearly is probably related to some sort of wound that I am still carrying from a long time ago, still part of a low self-esteem, some part of myself that I haven't been able to reintegrate, that I haven't been able to love or accept enough. And so, uh, in, anyway, I, that paying attention to patterns, I think that makes sense as the first step. And in a lot of the healing that I've read about and I've talked about on this podcast, awareness is the very first step. We simply have to open our eyes to the fact that something's going on inside of me. There's something underneath the surface that I need to pay attention to. So once again, awareness is the first thing we come to. And maybe as you listen to this, you're getting that feeling of awareness, a glimmering of, oh, hmm, that makes me think of something. Maybe I have something I need to work on too. So the second step is to identify particular childhood wounds and look back at them. I find this step for me to be a little harder because uh, I've, I've looked at the things that I remember, but I think there are childhood wounds that sometimes happen in infancy and toddlerhood when we're not really verbal and we may not have stored them as memories that are very retrievable to us. And so I find that to be more challenging to me to actually identify what the wounds are, though. I am aware of particular things from my childhood um, and in my relationship with my mother. I am aware of those things. And so I have looked at them and I know about those things, but it makes me wonder, could there be other hidden, hidden things from my childhood that I am just not clear about? So I need a lot more work there being able to identify what the wounds are. And I, for me, this will happen with journaling. Again, I always recommend this. I write, I talk about this all the time, how important it is to have a journal and to be able to write things down. And I think for me, it's going to work whenever I do get triggered and feel that sense of panic or fear inside that I journal about that shortly after that experience, because that's when I can come the closest to actually seeing and looking at what the wound is when I'm in that emotional state. So that's my plan to keep working at that, even though the wound itself doesn't particularly come to mind right now, but maybe it's a wound from my own infancy when I was the crying, screaming infant and somehow didn't get what I needed at that particular time. The next step that Shelley Robinson recommends, and I love this term, she says to be compassionately curious about our emotions. And I really like that idea of compassionately curious instead of being judgmental. And for me, I've had a problem all my life of judging my own emotions, particularly anger, but also fear. Also, I, um, vindictiveness is something that I feel at times or sometimes envy. And I view all of those emotions as negative and have been very self-judgmental about them and even self-punitive at times. Uh, for for experiencing those emotions, which has caused me all the more to wall them off and to shut down around those emotions because I have this 
uh, part of me, um, the inner voice, inner critic voice that says it's not okay to feel any negative emotions. Therefore, I don't want to look at them. I don't want to allow them to come to the surface. And, and I've been pretty good at trying to repress those emotions for a lot of my life. It's simply that they tend to come out uh, under stress and they pop out and sometimes surprise me when I discover that they're actually there, even though I thought I was hiding them and covering them up. So I resonate really well with this idea of being compassionately curious to start with compassion, to remind myself that it's okay to have any emotions that I have, whatever whatever feelings are there, whatever emotions arise, it's okay. Emotions are just emotions. They're normal and they're natural. And all shades of emotion are normal and natural. And it's okay to have them and okay to feel them. And the way that we manage them is to become aware and to allow them to come to the surface. So uh, she writes a lot about how we have to get in touch with our own emotions before we can parent our children and help teach them about their emotions. And I was aware of this as I was a parent and struggled a lot, particularly to help my kids with anger, because I'd never dealt with my own anger other than to repress it and wall it off within myself. I had no tools. I didn't know how to feel angry without acting out anger. And I didn't know what to do with anger or even how to express it or talk about it. And that was something I had to try to work on in a hurry when my own kids were developing. And I think I did not do a very good job helping my children with their anger because I hadn't gotten far enough with my own anger. So still in my life right now, even though I'm not raising my own children anymore, I can be compassionately curious about these negative emotions as they arise on me again, write about them in my journal and do some more healing work uh, around my anger, around envy, around vindictiveness and um, work on doing doing more healing, those old threads still coming from old wounds within me. So that's number three, again, to be compassionately curious about your own emotions. And number four, I was really interested in, um, which it came as a surprise to me, her fourth recommendation was to prioritize more fun in life. Um, that shocked me, but that's not something I ever would have thought of. And, and I realized how much I, I come from a very, I guess, Puritan work ethic background where fun is only something that you have after you earn it. You have to, to earn having fun by working hard and getting everything done. And even then you can't have very much fun because there will still be more work to do. And so this took me by surprise and it made me recognize that I'm actually judgmental about the idea of having fun. Like, wait a minute, life isn't just about having fun. And um, it became clear to me that this is a step I actually really need to focus on and work on for myself because even right now, <clears throat> retired from a job where I create my own work by doing podcasts, I do not prioritize having fun in my life and taking time out just for pure enjoyment and to play. And so uh, that surprised me, but it's very clear to me that's something I need to work on. And that kind of joy and play and pleasure, I think, is childlike in a way. And I realize I never had it when I was a child. And therefore, I can't tap into it very easily now as an adult. So for me, that's still something that needs work big time in my life. And here I am all these years that I've been alive and I haven't ever really learned how to prioritize having fun in life. And she mentions underneath this bullet point that our self-worth does not 
truly hinge on our production or achievement on how much we do or accomplish. And that that's a very important lesson that we teach our children and grandchildren. So again, I see this is an area that I'm not sure that I did a very good job in, in raising my own children, because I didn't really come to terms with my inability to have fun in life. I never really was aware of that. And I didn't work on that when my kids were little. So it's something it's not too late, I need to work on it now. And again, that will take some journaling, but probably also some action steps. I need to think of ways that I can build more fun into my life and ways of just taking time off and lessening the load. Because oftentimes I create work to fill up my day. And I I don't necessarily have to do that. So this is big. This is is huge. Something for me to work on um, that sounds like it will be pleasant and fun to add more fun into life. Uh, So anyway, I was glad to read that. Very surprised. Something I never would have thought of as being part of reparenting ourselves. But then, uh, then I see, you know, that is something as parents, how amazing if we can teach our children how to have fun and just play and that they have worth and value um, when they're just being themselves and just enjoying life. And they don't have to be constantly thinking about how they prove their worth or value or show it through what they do. Their value lies in just being who they are. So um, big time, number four, prioritize more fun, something that I'm going to start working on. And then the fifth suggestion from Shelley Robinson is self-forgiveness. And I've known that for a long time that I need to work on self-forgiveness. I really do believe that's one of the most important things we can all do for our mental health and our spiritual health to learn how to forgive things that have happened in the past, the ways in which we've been imperfect and flawed. And so I guess that would include the mistakes that I've made as a parent to my own children, the things that I didn't accomplish as, as well as I wish I had, uh, to be able to forgive myself for just not being as good as I would like to be as I wish I could be or as good as I thought I should be. And to accept myself as being imperfect and having flaws and not always being able to live up to the standards that I hold and set for myself, being okay with that. And I think that may go along with having more fun because it's okay to be imperfect, to maybe not always get everything done right on time, but to have fun in the process and to be compassionately curious about everything and um, including allowing myself to just be and to not be perfect and to not always have an answer for everything. And for me, that also includes being able to say no sometimes and to set boundaries and take better care of myself. Uh, by making sure that I don't overwork. And that's been a chronic problem for for me as well. Just uh, filling up my time with work, as I said before, without adding fun into the mix and having really big expectations of myself for what I should be able to accomplish. So these are definitely things I need to work on. And I wanted to share a quote from Shelley Robinson, which was this, Motherhood is the hardest and holiest work because my kids reflect back to me what I haven't yet resolved within myself. I love that thought. I love the fact that uh, as parents, we are able to look at ourselves. It's looking at our children and what they're experiencing and going through is like looking in a mirror and being able to see ourselves. And I'm finding that's even true with adult children. Um, who themselves are fully grown and now having their own children, they are still a mirror to me of ways in which I have not yet healed myself. And it's really beautiful and it's amazing. And it's a gift that we receive from the act of parenthood, the act of choosing to be a parent and to bring 
new little humans into the world and to raise them. We get this gift of being able to heal ourselves in a way that may not be possible with, without having children. We may not be able to see as deeply within ourselves if we don't have children. I'm not, not to say that, that there aren't other ways that we could heal, but it's just this, this journey of parenthood. It's such an opportunity to go deep inside and to see quite clearly what a child needs in order to be healthy and to grow and to also recognize what part of me is still crying out in some ways because I didn't get exactly what it was that I needed at a certain time in my life. So uh, this information has been really helpful to me, the reparenting information and to even think of it as reparenting for myself. It goes hand in hand with some of what I read in uh, Dr. Bessel van der Kolk's book. I've talked about that before, The Body Keeps the Score. And he talks quite a lot about childhood trauma there. And one of the things he explains is that there are stages for a child of asking for help. And the first stage is to simply cry out, which is the only way a child has of asking for help is to cry. And if help doesn't come, the child enters into a state of panic uh, and um, it's fight or flight and panic, uh, which is the stage of screaming <laughs> and in order to try to get help. If help still doesn't come at some point, the child collapses because uh, emotionally they cannot maintain that level of stress of the fight or flight reaction and the child collapses in their nervous system and they may just just crater and fall asleep, just, just give up. And it's at that point though, that the damage has really been done when the child gives up and doesn't try anymore to get the help that it needs. So, uh, I'm thinking, thinking perhaps because I respond, um, so deeply to the screams of, of a baby that perhaps that is what it puts me into fight or flight reaction because that stage two of the, of the, uh, response to stress is where I had a wound. So, um, again, that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to go more deeply into that, uh, read a little bit more of Dr. Vander Kolk's book, which is amazing. And also continue these steps of reparenting and giving myself the positive messages that I needed to hear and perhaps didn't hear at certain times in my life. So I don't know if you're experiencing anything like this, but statistically we know that the vast majority of us have experienced some sort of trauma in our childhood. So it makes sense that most of us could use a little bit of reparenting for ourselves. I'm going to list for you one more time the steps that Shelley Robinson mentioned that I talked about here. First of all, pay attention to the patterns, become aware. When do I get triggered and what is it that triggers me? Number two, identify the wounds of childhood. This is a big one for me that I'm still working on. Number three, be compassionately curious about any emotions that arise. And remember that you have to deal with your own emotions before you can help a child manage theirs. Number four, prioritize more fun and remember that your worth does not hinge on how much you produce or what you achieve. And then number five, self-forgiveness. Learn to be imperfect and to be okay with the fact that you're not perfect. So I hope uh, those steps are helpful to you as well. And I'm really grateful to Shelly Robinson. All the credit goes to her for this reparenting information. And it was a nice find for me there to take a look at her website and read some of the tools that she has there. So until next week, I'll come back again with another topic. Um, 
be well and take care of yourself. Remember that we're here for love. So face your fear, be ready for whatever life brings you next, and love each and every moment of your very precious existence. Bye-bye. Thank you.